let me flip you around real quick. This is where we just came from. There are still a few police cars up there, but the majority of them, the majority of them have made their way down this way. We saw cars, sirens on, heading the other direction, likely to Regional 1, where we know one DeSoto County deputy is in critical condition. This is a part of that car that got towed just a few minutes ago. So this is what people are dealing with. You can still hear the sirens going off from the fire alarms, every single window completely shattered out between this guardrail right here all the way to this median. This is where the car was essentially funneled into this creek. But now they have a massive spreadsheet of credit card information that they have to match up with banks and real victims. They all pleaded with Clark for more than eight minutes, but ultimately it was the officer perched behind this tree that fired the shots that hit the teen. But when police found out, they didn't have to come far. The Covington department is just two blocks that way, 0.1 miles away. Of course, 601 Central Time, the minute that Dr. King was shot, assassinated on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel. I just got done talking with the victim. He said he told your investigators inside Regional One that there were three people in that car. That directly contradicts what you just said. Police departments across the country use this database to catch violent fugitives. But I learned the MPD did not have the IHOP murder suspect in NCIC, the National FBI database. In fact, if Derek Harris, the suspect in this case, had driven down Shelby Drive and caught I-55 to Mississippi, if Mississippi State Police had pulled him over, they probably would have let him drive away. Katina Rounds is waiting on an update. At this point, I don't know what they're doing because I've gotten no communication. The mother's upset because more than five months after her 27-year-old son was killed in a Whitehaven IHOP, the suspect, Derek Harris, is still not behind bars. Are they waiting for him to be in a car and then they just look up on him? Or are they actually looking for him? I discovered the U.S. Marshals aren't looking because sources confirmed the MPD did not have Harris in the FBI's National Crime Information Center which all departments use to search for warrants. I'm, I'm not surprised at all. But she is frustrated. They should be looking for him. He's already killed two people now that we know of, and he's just free to walk around. MPD spokesperson Lewis Brownlee wrote in an email, quote, thanks for the heads up that he's not an NCIC, and said they've been following up on tips and searching for Harris. They're not alone. After my son's funeral, I went out every single day for over a month. And I walked the neighborhoods, I passed out flyers. I even went like undercover, put on a wig, tried to blend in with the area. One mother is doing everything she can. She just wants Memphis police to do the same. I want to know why. Why hasn't he been placed on that database? Now, after our emails bringing it to the MPD's attention, they told me Harris has been added to NCIC. I also asked the MPD if they have a policy internally about putting suspects into NCIC and if there's any punishment, if there is a failure to do so, they told me they'd have to check on that policy tomorrow. As for Harris, he is considered armed and dangerous and has been seen recently, as recently as the last two weeks in the Riverside area and here in South Memphis. If you see him, call 911 or Crime Stoppers at 528 Cash, and we're going to continue to stay on top of this story and hold police accountable. That was roughly three weeks ago when our story aired and when the marshals began hunting for Derek Harris. Today, they caught the suspected murderer and provided a family some much needed closure. Today, Derek Harris was finally in handcuffs. When I heard the news, is Katina here? Yes. I went straight to the home of Devin Wilson's mother. <laughs> How are you? It's all because of you, man. It's all because of you. Six months ago, a hero was murdered. Devin Wilson was an Air Force veteran and a father. Police say he died defending a woman who was being beaten by Harris inside an IHOP. And there was just no way I was going to ever be able to be at peace with him free. The murder weighed on the family. It weighed on me, too. It's no words. It's just no words. Um. It's, it's because of you. The stories we did exposing MPD's mistakes put Harris on the U.S. Marshal's radar, which led to today's arrest in Chicago and moments of happiness that have been hard to come by. And we were high-fiving and I was trying to call everybody and I was like, they got him, they got him, they got him. I just thank Jesus so much. He did <laughs> everything. 
that I wanted. The arrest doesn't bring back the 27-year-old father, but... The story can finally try and come to an end. Harris will now answer for the charges against him, and a mother can finally get a good night's sleep, just not tonight. Just a feeling of relief. I probably won't go to sleep tonight. <laughs> Now, Harris is still in Chicago awaiting extradition back here to Memphis. That should happen in the coming days or potentially weeks. Tonight on Fox 13 News at 10, here what the MPD is doing to address the problems we uncovered with their database policy. Reporting live tonight in Whitehaven, Zach Crenshaw. It began when an armed security guard pulled his armored truck full of cash around the region's bank. That's when two guys thought they could get away with some crisp 100s. Instead, one's behind bars facing federal charges and his partner is on the run. Fox 13 was the only station in the quiet Hedgemore neighborhood when police emerged with a man in handcuffs. His journey started two miles away, outside a region's bank. We see um, a white car pull up onto the curb and the guy get out. Seconds later, Sandy and her daughter Beth heard it. So it's just bam, 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 bam. And she was like, go, 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 mom. And I was like, I just, can't. Just drive, just drive. And I was just thinking, oh my God, this guy's shooting and my baby's in the car. The two were able to speed off and call 911. And that's when it really began. The Memphis police had a massive manhunt. It led them to Hedgemore, with police dogs picking up the scent in backyards, like Andrew Cofield's. Yes, and when we went in the backyard, we couldn't find him. It's a good thing police found him first, and he was eventually caught just down the street from where the teen lived, handcuffed and put in that squad car for questioning. Despite all the shots fired and commotion, the only injury was to an officer's ankle during the chase. Back at Regions, the mother and daughter were counting their blessings that on this Friday, they went inside the bank. If I'd gone through the drive-thru, I would have been there. I would have been in the line of fire because that's how quick these things happen. And so I'm very grateful. Now the FBI is investigating, as they always do when there are cases of bank robberies. A spokesperson tonight told me that the two criminals, if that second suspect is caught, they will both almost certainly face federal charges, and those charges will be enhanced because of the shots they fired. Merle, Greg. All right, so do we know anything about any cash taken, Zach? Yeah, they were not clear about that, Merle. I asked the FBI agents here on scene as well as MPD. They would not mention anything about if money was taken from that armored truck, a big reason why. Police don't want other criminals to know how much money is taken during bank robberies or if any is because they don't want other people trying to pull this same stunt. Now, very few ever catch a glimpse of the men and women while they're in their tactical gear. But as you'll see, you don't want to see this group outside your door. On a foggy Friday morning in a gas station parking lot, eight U.S. Marshals gear up, then huddle up for their first target. Chris Diaz. A known MS-13 gang member. His nickname is Psycho. Psycho? Right. He has a very extensive violent history. Diaz's charges made him a priority for the Fugitive Task Force. Second degree murders, importing a firearm with intent to commit a felony. He's also pointed out of Florida for several charges. Criminals like Diaz are the norm, though. We try to pick cases that are significant. Uh, we only deal with violent crimes or uh, crime, sexual crimes. The marshals got intel Diaz was back from Florida and staying at his mom's house. For minutes, no one answered the door. Sleeping neighbors answered first. You seen this guy? He's an MS-13 gang member. He would have just arrived. Not say him. Eventually, the Diaz family came outside. Hey, is Chris Diaz here? Yes, he, he is. No Chris, though. So marshals went inside. Minutes later, a five-year-old girl walked out. Come on, sweetie. Go here to your mama. Eventually, the man charged with attempted murder emerged in handcuffs. Well, we found him hiding in the closet. For every violent criminal that gets locked up, another is still out on the streets. I want to ask you about how you choose which case to run on on a particular day. One is the severity of the crime, and the other is like how likely we think someone is at the, at the place. The marshals hit their next place quickly. Here's a picture of him. 
Daryl Shields. He's wanted for aggravated sexual battery and aggravated sexual battery by an authority figure. After multiple door knocks and consulting a neighbor, it was clear Shields wasn't home. We're going to go on and look for him somewhere else or maybe another day. They never had to, though. Shields turned himself in a week later. There are a lot of misconceptions about U.S. Marshals. It's not always, you know, like something you see in a movie. You know, there's a lot of paperwork involved. And a lot of dead ends, like the last target of the day. The guys went inside, talked to the family. They say she's not here. They say she doesn't know where she, where she is. So we just have to move on, keep working it. In June alone, the Fugitive Task Force arrested 64 people on 89 warrants. Next Friday, though, they'll gear up again. There's always more work to be done.